Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Are you feeling rested, refreshed, recharged after the bye? No. You ready to roll? No, 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 <laughs> no, none of those things. None of those things. Are the Saints I mean, rested, recharged, ready to roll after the bye? I mean, I think they're going to be physically uh, the best they've been all season. Uh, we saw a lot of bodies back. It was just another reminder of how nice it would have been to have this bye back when it would have mattered more. Mm. Uh, but. You know, maybe we'll see their best game of the season this week, and maybe that'll just make the uh, the rest of it feel worse if, if we do. Um, I, you know what? It's weird, Mike. I um, I'll never cheer for my team to lose. I, I know there's the whole you know you want them to lose out so you can be it for draft purposes or whatever. I'll just they, I, they I, solved that dilemma for you this year, didn't they? Yes, uh, yes, they did. Um, because they they have no first round draft pick. But Mike, interestingly enough, like if you pick at the top of round two. Some yeah. some could argue you'd rather have a pick at the top of round two where you could take someone with, with great value, right? But in, in the second round, and maybe you had a first round grade on if they fell out of round one. Yeah, look, we actually had this debate on the podcast earlier, and, and yes, if you feed that into a computer, you're you're gonna get the right answer, which is yeah, pick as high as possible. Pick pick thirty eight, pick thirty four, pick thirty three. Um but I, I feel like that would be, I think that would that would be a stink on their legacy. Um, you know, like I, I think they want to avoid it at all costs to, to be the team. What if the Eagles go to the Super Bowl and then pick second next year because they have the Saints pick? Like you, you can't live something like that down. That's like in the third. Pick, you know, yeah. Mickey Loomis signed Sean Payton and Drew Brees won a Super Bowl and once traded the second pick in the draft to Philadelphia. <laughs> I think you want to avoid that. I think uh, you want to avoid it. You know what though, man. If that's the reality, it's what it is. The Saints made made a series of trades, and clearly they made the wrong decisions. And now they'll, yeah. they'll live with that and try to put this back together. Let's talk. Let's talk this week in particular. Um, Eric McCoy, he gonna play? I think so. I'll probably have a better feel tomorrow. But uh, McCoy and Werner look really positive. I'm still pretty dubious on Lattimore. What's going on with Lattimore? I don't know. We talked to uh, Chris Richard about it. It's just such a unique injury. It's an internal injury. You know, it's a lacerated kidney. You can't simulate the contact. You can't know for sure when he's ready for contact. And I think they're being extra, extra cautious. And, and I actually think being out of the playoff push might, you know, they didn't say this, but that might lead to even more caution. Um, yeah, no, that makes sense. But would, could I make the same case for Pete Werner then? Yeah, you could. Um, you know, that's a little bit more of a, you know, you can you you can specifically see what's healed and 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 you know, you see these so many times that you have a basis of comparison and when you think a player is cleared to play. Uh, but yeah, I mean at, at a certain point there becomes an argument to shut a lot of players down who are dealing with injuries. I, that, you know, they haven't reached it yet because we you know, you've got a coaching staff that that's fighting for their jobs and mathematically not eliminated from the playoffs yet, even though it seems way too far-fetched to chase. So those are decisions they're going to be making over the next four weeks, for sure. Um, what? Well, look, I was going to say what percentage would you give or what likelihood of the Saints winning their next four games, but that would include beating Cleveland and Philadelphia on the road. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's get rid of it, right? I mean, what do you think is realistic over the Final Four? Yeah, but here's the weird thing about the Saints. is like whenever they get their act together, the opponent isn't really what matters. Uh, the, the 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 ones that got away this year include uh you know Cincinnati uh, uh you know they, they some of the teams they beat uh were playing pretty well but um when they've been playing bad they're going to lose to anybody so uh, they could lose to Atlanta at home and then win at Cleveland uh i guess at Philadelphia is one i would never predict them to win under any circumstances but what percentage that they could play their best football in December of the season, it's probably pretty high because it's a low bar they've got across and they're healthier than ever before now. Um, a couple other things for this weekend. Uh, the Saints claim Dino Benjamin off of waivers. Uh, do you suspect we'll see we'll see Benjamin, David Johnson at, at running back there with Alvin Kamara? 
Yeah, I think they could throw him right into the mix. Um, they've used three running backs before, and David Johnson isn't exactly like miles ahead of Eno Benjamin. Eno Benjamin played a lot more football this year than David Johnson has. So, um, you know, he'll have a small package of plays. But, yeah, I think we're going to see him play right away. Uh, Mike Triplett's with us. He's on Twitter at Mike Triplett. Of course, New Orleans Football. Our Conros are brought to you by Benny's Car Wash. Who is right, so if and you and I agree, right? They're they're four and nine. They're not going anywhere. They're going to play out the string. They're not mathematically eliminated, but they're out. Um, who is, in your opinion, worth keeping an eye on that might be playing for a job, a contract yeah. over these next four yeah. weeks? Well, I mean. Obviously, they decided not to make the answer to that question, Jameis Winston. Right. Um, I, I still can't help but wonder if they are mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, if they give him two weeks or three weeks for evaluation's sake. But you know, we said this last week, if they do not ever put Jameis Winston back on the field this season, I think that means they've already made up their mind for right. next season. Um, the interesting one to me, I mean, the most fascinating one, to me is Pete Werner, Caden Ellis, and Demario Davis, who could all, you know, have an argument for defensive MVP of this season. They're probably three of the top four uh, on defense this year at a position where they only play two guys at once, and sometimes only one when they go into their dime package. Caden Ellis is an unrestricted free agent. Demario Davis has a great bargain contract, but maybe could fetch something and trade with that great bargain contract. I mean, what do you do with that position next year? We'll have a lot. It'll, it'll be based a lot on what direction this team is taking. If they're going into a little bit of a rebuilding mode or, or if they're in it to win it, it might depend on who their coach is, but I'm really curious to see how they use those guys over the next month because it's, I feel like there's, there's only two chairs for those three guys next season. That's, that's interesting to look at. Um, and I never would have thought we'd have that conversation about Caden Ellis, but uh, he's earned yeah. he's he's earned the discussion. Now, he's not better than Demario Davis, but the question would be: Do you sign Caden Ellis to a reasonable contract because you're a team with cap issues, uh, and meanwhile trade Demario and his contract for for you know what w- would be a really good draft pick? That would be the discussion. Not is Caden Ellis better than Demario Davis? Not, we're not quite there yet. And and also you're talking about a young player as opposed to an aging player. So yeah, that that's that's absolutely a conversation worth happening. You also mentioned, and, and I would yeah. say the other one is Alante Taylor and, and Paul Sadibo. If Marshawn Lattimore comes back, um, you only have one outside cornerback spot left for those two guys, and 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 I think Alante Taylor might have earned his shot to get a look there, but it might be a moot point if if Lattimore doesn't come back and play full time snaps. So you said soon. you said it may matter who the coach is. Um, okay, mm-hmm. you buy in the. The, the Sean Payton talk of the last week? I mean, it's there's so many what-ifs that would have to connect. I mean, it's, it, it's not 0%, um, and he has had opportunities to quash it and say, no, look, this is not true. They have a coach. Uh, I'm not going back there. And he hasn't said that when he's been asked about it a couple times. So the door's not slammed, and, and I've made the point a couple of times that he did, it wasn't a bitter divorce when he left. He was burnt out, and he wanted to walk away from football. I don't believe he was orchestrating his exit to get to Miami. Uh, Miami might have been able to woo him uh, with a you know a battery re- an instant battery recharger with, with the opportunity they were offering. But I, you know his relationships are good with the Saints with ownership, and he knows there's a lot of dysfunctional organizations out there. I put them ahead of twenty teams on the on the list of potential suitors. So I'm not going to rule it out, but you know. I think we're talking 50-50 at best that they have an opening and, and then, what, 5 or 10% beyond that that Sean Payton would be the one to fill it. Okay, then I'll, I'll ask you the follow-up. Uh, 50-50 that they have an opening. What would have to happen over the final four weeks for the Saints to make the decision to move on from Dennis Allen? Yeah, it's hard to imagine that the, the final four weeks can be the deciding factor. I mean, certainly finishing three or one or four and zero, oh, I think could could cement his place. And and finishing one and three or zero oh and four with you know a total implosion could could really you know change the tide the other way. But uh, I think the things they're going to base their decision on the main two things, as I wrote this week, is one is what is the direction of the program? Are they going to admit? Look, everything we 
this approach we took this year was wrong. We tried to keep the band together, and we kept the coaching staff together, and we kept the roster together, and we kept the culture together. But now we want to rebuild and reboot and start fresh and young. I think that's something that could get him fired. Um, and, and I don't know that the last four weeks could change that mindset. And then I think private discussions with, with valued leaders and respected coaches and players on, hey, you know, does this guy have the confidence of the team? Does, you know, the belief of the team, uh, how much of this is on him? Um, that we're not privy to. I think, I think that'll be a big factor. And I'm not sure that the final four weeks can make a difference there. But if we see, we have not yet seen this team totally turn on him. We see them enter these games with energy and fire and they haven't quit yet. So I'd be a little surprised if we all of a sudden see that over the final four weeks. Um, isn't the first scenario you described, hasn't that happened? The, the scenario that they were wrong and trying to keep the band together and like all yeah. of that has been proven wrong. I think so. I mean, I I think it's happened, but I don't know how radically they're going to deviate from that plan next year. I mean, do they trade Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Demario Davis? You know, like, are they trading all those guys you know, next year, cutting Jameis Winston, pulling back on the salary cap, trying to, you know, collect draft picks? Or are they, let's take, you know, four changes and you know, have better health and, and make another run at this thing. I, we don't know for sure what their approach is going to be, but yeah, we know that that approach definitely did not work out for them this year. It, so you, you mentioned trades. So that was going to be my last question is, and, and I, Mike, I tried to talk football. Like I tried to talk Saints Falcons and we got like, not, no, you, yeah, we got yeah. like, we got like a minute and a half. Worth it's been of 12 weeks of this. Yeah. It's been 12 weeks. No, it really this, is, I, man. <laughs> we're swimming in the same pool, buddy. <laughs> Uh, except I have to be here three hours a day. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, okay, so Michael Thomas's contract is not tradable. They can't trade Michael Thomas. No no one is going to give the Saints anything of value for that deal, uh, for, the, for that contract. But the Saints are $61 million over the projected cap. What in the world do they do to get within they cap compliance? Get I mean, they they. They can get there. They can always get there. And I've already taken pencil to paper to make sure that they can get there. Um, and it's, you know, restructuring every contract on the books. And some of them are automatically scheduled to happen already. And the cap's going to go up. And, you know, they were, what, what were they? The last two years in a row, they, they, they moved $100 million. You know, it's moving it into future years. It's not completely eliminating it from the caps. But that's why you're going to make those decisions with guys like that. So if you take someone like Michael Thomas, you have two decisions. You keep him and you push the money into a future year and then it becomes next year's problem. Or you, you know, eat the 24 million by cutting him or whatever, but he's off the books after one year or, or two years if you make it to, you know, so there is a long-term benefit and cap rolls over. And, you know, I mean, like, you stop paying people at a certain point and then you do catch up a little bit. Uh, Drew Brees will finally be off the books next year, you know, after he was on the books this year. And, you know, it, it, it's a shell game a little bit, but it still does help if you stop paying guys. You will catch up quicker if you stop paying guys. Yeah. Um, that's that's the really tricky part for this team, though, uh, in this offseason. So, but they're uh, not going to, just to make it clear, they're not going to keep anybody because they don't know how to make salary cap math work. They, you know, they will look at how much is he do if we keep him and is he worth that much more money? You know, Michael Absolutely. Thomas, is he worth another 15 and a half million? Jameis Winston, is he worth another 12 and a half million? They're not keeping either of those guys because of the cap. They w they are going to make those decisions based on what they're due next year. And and those are two guys who I think are long shots to be back with the team. That's interesting. Um Man, that would be a massive dead dead cap money. I believe it's twenty. They they if they cut Michael Thomas, Mike, if I'm not mistaken, I think they'd save about three million dollars. But it's it's still but that, like, yeah. But see, like yeah, the numbers are very similar into what he counts against the cap this year. But they're not, you know, they're 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 saving all the new money he's due. He's due another fifteen point eight million, right. and he's got twenty four million in dead money. You can't escape that twenty-four million in debt right. money. That right. that will always be on your books. 
nothing you can do can remove that. The only thing you can do if you keep him is, well, we'll pay some of it now and some of it in the future. You know, like if you cut him, you pay it all now. But, but it's already, it's already on the book. So, so you can't, you know, you can't, add to it to, you know yeah, two I, wrongs don't make the right as they say. <laughs> I was I was specifically looking at the at the dead cap hit because yeah, it yeah. ain't my money, Brian writing that check. Let yeah, someone else write yeah, that check. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm concerned about is the cap. So it'd be exactly, you know, what it looks exactly. like. So, all right, uh, Mike Triplett, New Orleans dot football. Um, hopefully next week we have some good football. Maybe maybe they shake something up and uh, fire. They're going to be one on game there. out of first next week. They're going to be one game out of first next week. <laughs> Why would you say that? Uh, because because it's true. Um, all right, Mike Triplett on Twitter at Mike Triplett, New Orleans dot football. Brought to you by Benny's Car Wars. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Matt. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.